Hello everybody, glad you could make it. My name is Kaylee Allen and welcome to this week's video. Now, I'm aware that this is a repot with me. Sorry, there's gnats everywhere, I need to do a bomb. I haven't been here. I'm aware that this is a repot with me, but I'm gonna tell you straight up for anybody that is absolutely not interested in anything other than plants, this is absolutely not the video for you. Past showing some plants in this um, video and propagating them, that's all you're gonna get. This video is absolutely not about plants. This video is about the situation that has been kind of at play for over a year now anyway, um, and that is the horse situation. So I'd like to tell you all real upfront so that you're not sitting through this for nothing. That is what has been talked about in this video. There'll be no other questions answered unless it relates to the horse stuff. So I'm asking you very kindly not to leave comments such as, you know, I come here for plants, not interested. Nobody needs to see those comments and it's just kind of dumb. I'm giving you the out now. Also, sorry, I'm very slow moving today. I've had a really rough morning. I've had a really rough weekend. I've had a really rough week. What am I even talking about? I've had a rough time. My heart rate is actually, at the moment, it's 100 BPM and it's not going down. I'm just all over the place. But I have some stuff here to propagate. You'd be lucky if I do anything, really. Um, that's not really what this video is. I'm making this video today because I don't have any other choice and it's been really tough. And I thank you in advance for your compassion and your understanding on this. Not everyone will understand and I accept that. Not everyone will be compassionate and I accept that. What I won't accept is people just writing really nasty things on this video. If you don't write something that is a kind critique or a kind opinion, then I'm going to remove it because this is just not the place for that. This is a really, really serious thing. This is talking about the life of an animal and I'm just not, I'm not entertaining that this time, guys. Say what you will about me, but that's it. So, okay, this is difficult for me. Um, I'll grab a plant anyway. I have some really rusty, not pliers, cutting shears. I have some here and I'm just gonna propagate. They're rusty. I don't give a shit. Come at me if you want. I, I don't give a shit, guys. There's nothing else to do on this video other than talk to you, really. So, the horse update. I told you you'd get one. It's not the update that I thought I'd be giving you whatsoever, to be honest. <sighs> okay. So, I can't remember where we left off, but just to reiterate, this, don't take all the information just from this video. This has been an ongoing case for over a year now, and if you have not been watching these Repot With Me videos, you're not going to know a lot of the detail. I'm going to put as much detail as I can for the sake of this video in here. Sorry if you're hearing it twice, I do apologize. Um, just try and understand that there may be a lot of context that you're not getting in the scope of this video. So if you don't understand, then you can write a question and I will do my best over the next however long to answer that in the comments. But please, please, please respect. This is quite complex. There is a lot to it and it might just not all be in this video. And if you haven't seen the other videos, you might be missing some info. So, as you all know, I bought a horse a year ago that I had a, a horse friend try out for me and everything like that, and he was, you know, perfect, suitable, whatever. He passed all of the checks anyway that we, we did at the time. Not long after getting him, realized he's, he's not perfect at all. He's very aggressive in his stable, and um, he he's not so good ridden either um, if, he, if he knows that you're not you know, on it with your contact, then he'll, he'll throw you off here and there. Not all the time, intermittent. We've been through all this. I know we have. Um, and sorry, I'm, I'm all over the place. There's been litigation with the seller. I asked the seller to take them back, pointed out the obvious issues and the things that were missold to me. And the seller has repeatedly said, no, stuff yourself. Go look after your horse. Go enjoy your horse, is I think exactly what they said. And this has gone on for about a year now been writing letters backwards and forwards whenever we send something to them, they refuse to address it and they do everything they can to just put up a brick wall. And I've been paying out my ass to try and knock that brick wall down in addition to looking after the horse each month, uh, which is a huge amount of money given that I can't really, I can't do anything with them. I could go and see him and stand in the corridor of, of the livery of the barn, but I wouldn't be able to touch him over the stable door. I wouldn't be able to do anything. There's no point me even being there. Um, but during that time, he's been looked after by staff. He's had full turnout during summer. He's only just been brought in for winter where he gets sort of rotated turnouts. It's not every day, but it's every 
of the day, I think, for X amount of hours. But over the summer, he was out the whole time. So he's enjoyed his summer. He's quite fat. He's looking well, as they say. Um, he's in good health, all the rest. But the issues that we found with him are the same. He is the same horse. Has not changed. The letter still hadn't gone out. Uh, the letter that I said that, hey, it's, it's going out. Um, I haven't even got a draft of it yet. And I got... I kind of thought enough is enough. With the help of Ben and my horse friend, I sent a text message because that's kind of how we're communicating in terms of like quick communication. I sent a text message to my solicitor going, look, I'm so disheartened and I'm unhappy here. I've had this horse a year now and we are no further forward at all, not even a little bit. And there's been tons of delays. I know it's not my fault there's been delays. Um, a lot of it has been my solicitor. And I've said, look, I think it's really damaged my case in court. So I was concerned about it. Obviously, I'm not a professional. I don't know what has damaged it, but that's basically what I said. Um, a couple of days went by. I get a message back saying, look, can we have a phone call? Um, I hear you out. Your draft will be ready Friday, which is Friday just gone. Um, and I'd like to tell you about some, some other options. And I was like, okay. So I had a phone call with my solicitor on Tuesday, two seconds. Come on, these terrible scissors. Why are you stuck or is it aerial route? Why are you stuck? It is the aerial route, okay. Um, on this phone call, she basically said, look, this woman is never going to back down. She is never going to settle. She's never going to give you anything. This woman is going to push you to the brink. If she does go to court, which obviously if I make her, then she has to, although she doesn't have to turn up, she will likely turn up and where she could bring one barrister, she'll bring three. Do you know what I mean? She will absolutely sap the light out, life out of you. That's not her exact words. That's what I'm saying to you. That's how I read it on the phone. Basically, this woman is just something else. I kind of felt like my solicitor might not have dealt with this Typical kind of um, opposition before, maybe. It kind of came across like that. Um, it worried me because she gave me another option, and I'll get on to why that worried me um, in a moment. But the other option she gave was, hey, I know a trainer that specializes in horses that are, I don't know how to phrase this in horse terms, so forgive me if I'm not phrasing it properly, but horses that are, you know, naughty, um, aggressive, they misbehave, they, they do all these things, they've got behavioral issues anyway, I should put it that way. Um, this is, this is what this trainer does. They specialize in fixing horses like this. And she said, look, what if I came over to your livery yard with this trainer and he assessed the horse and gave you his opinion on, you know, whether he could fix it, sell it, do, do what, whatever needed to, to happen um, so that you can pass this horse on to a better home, um, someone that can exercise him, can stimulate him. Um, just give him a, a nice home, like an understanding owner that knows all of his issues um, and that is just very understanding, very competent with him. Um, some, you know, we've, we assess whether that can happen and we go from there. And I was like, oh my God, okay, so what does this mean for my claim? Does that mean we're done? Like, what does that mean? And she basically went, no, no, you can, you can still fight. What happens is, you, you, you know, eventually you, you, you rehabilitate the horse, you do whatever you want to do, you, you sell them on, and you, you've got to give the previous owner sort of a chance to come and inspect the horse and it's all recorded and stuff, which obviously she would not do. Um, uh, if she declines, that's on her. She can't say anything about it in court, basically. Um, so she has to have a, be in a position to inspect that horse before it's sold on, um, ultimately for a huge loss um, in price. And she was like, you can, you could fight. She was like, there is such a thing. And I, I will say this just in case anyone's going through something. I can't remember the name of the insurance. She said that I could get, but I could take out some kind of insurance before I initiated a court date in the future. 
that would protect me from paying their costs if I lost. She said all of this on the phone and my heart just sank because I was like, wait a minute, I thought, like, does this mean you don't back my case? Does this mean that you, you think I've got no chance? I, 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 I mean, I'm not going to go into all the complicated feelings I felt about that after a year of litigation because I'm sure you can work it out. I don't need to go into those. You guys can have your own reaction to that. Um, but I thought to myself, well, okay, well, what do I do here? <clears throat> and I said, look, it, you know, if this was you, it's your horse, and, you know, what would you do? She said, well, at the very least, I would do this appointment and have this you know, professional look at the horse and, and give you their opinion, um, at the very least. So you can, you can decide what you want to do because obviously you could sell the horse, drop the case, um, and move on that way. You could sell the horse, reconfigure the claim a little bit and keep fighting, or you can keep things exactly as they are and keep fighting. Um, I came to the conclusion that it's it's probably not the best thing for this poor pony to just be stuck with, other than being out in the field and in the stable, there's no real stimulation. It's not, it's not really the life I want for him. I feel like the kind of horse he is and the kind of mistrust he's placed in people, I think he could really, <clears throat> he could really have an owner that could enrich him and he could build trust with. He's not getting that and he hasn't had that in a year. Um, he's had a bit of, well, he's had essentially turn out for a year. What, what they like to say in the horse world is turn him away for a year, which basically means stick him in a field and forget about him and see if he gets over it, which, uh, he has not done that <laughs> for the record. So anyway, I said, look, all right, we will make the appointment. We will, we will do the thing. So that was arranged for this Saturday just gone. I should tell you, I'm, I'm filming this on Monday, the 31st. So it's Halloween. Trick or treat. <laughs> um, I'm filming this on Halloween. So this took place, I think the phone call took place on like Wednesday or something. I immediately arranged to go down to my livery, pop in, see the horse, see um, my yard manager. She has ridden the horse a few times. She's, she takes care of the horse all the time. So I popped in to see her, popped in to see the livery owner. That's the person that has been essentially backing me professionally throughout litigation and stuff. Um, and basically tell them, look, I've got this thing planned. This is this is how it is. What do you think of this? What do you think to this? And they said, look, I don't think any harm can come from this. They said that they would have expected this seller by now to have just ended this and resolved it. Um, and they've never seen anything quite like this before. Um, this level of defiance is just it's not something that they've personally seen because nine times out of ten, if you make something super difficult for someone, they don't have enough money to fight you on it. Um, so they were just kind of shocked, I guess. It's kind of out of the realm of what they've experienced anyway because who likes to be living in a world where everybody does everybody dirty with horse sales? So I don't blame them for not experiencing that. So anyway, we spoke about it and I basically told them, look, this is going to happen. So this is Friday. I was like, tomorrow my solicitor is coming and she's accompanying a... Well, it turned out to be two trainers that are going to come and take a look at the horse and, and just see see what's what, really. Just assess him, have a little look at him, handle him in the stable a little bit, lunge him, ride him, see what's going on. They were like, yeah, cool. Um, let's see. Let's see what happens tomorrow. Let's, let's go from there. So it was the next day and we get to the meeting and the professionals turn up with my solicitor in tow. They... Assess them. They, they do just that. They speak to him in, in the stable and stuff. They speak to him. You know what I mean? They, um, they, they have a good look at him in the stable. Uh, one of the trainers immediately does a little bit of work with him and you can see that he's very reactive to the behavior and you can see there's actually some glimmers of, of responsiveness in there to, to the, like, sort of training that the guy was trying out on him just to see how far he could get with him in a couple of minutes. Um, so that had happened. My livery owner, he wasn't there at the time due to a really unforeseen event, um, but he was back later and he kind of agreed the, the way, uh, I, can't, I can't really phrase what I'm saying. Basically the trainer that saw the horse in the stable agreed with everything that we've always said about him. Like we didn't tell him this information, we just, he, he kind of came to these same conclusions that we always have, which was kind of comforting because it was nice to know this horse was understood. 
the trainer said, look, this isn't a bad horse. He's, he wants to be a good boy. He's frightened. He said, like, when I walked into the stable, he was already on the back foot. He, because what this horse likes to do is he lunges forward to get you and then he backs off. Sometimes he'll come at you. Sometimes he'll try and pin you to the wall. Like, there's loads of different behaviors he does, but you can tell it's out of fear. And I was like, yes, that's, that's what we thought. We, we garnered that. Um, it turns out a, a few weeks earlier, a few days earlier, I'm not too sure on the time. He, a member of staff was just walking past his stable and he darted from one side of the stable to the other and lashed out at the member of staff walking past and bit their ear and drew blood. So that's not so good. So he now sometimes has a great over his stable just while there are some, um, some different staff in there that he's not quite used to. So that was the thing. It was then time to lunge him. So we took him outside to lunge. It was, not super eventful, actually. I thought he would be a lot more spicy, given that he hadn't been ridden for a year. He wasn't too bad. He did. He threw some shapes on the lunge line, but it, everything was generally not so bad. Um, he was ridden. He wasn't too bad either, to be honest. He was. He was okay. He wasn't too bad. Again, threw some shapes. Don't want to go into it, but he was assessed anyway, and the conclusion was reached that the horse would be I don't want to use the term fixed because you can never truly fix problems like this and I understand that it's very it's it's the brain it's behavior it's not that simple you can fix a lot of it but you can't just fix something but for all intents and purposes anyway he would be he could be much more obviously trusting in people he could be much more manageable and everything else the quirks that he has on the saddle where he likes to drop shoulder and bolt Either there can be a rider that's happy to work with that, because I know a lot of you are out there. It's not me, but I know a lot of you are. Or, you know, training can be done anyway. Or the rider can just accept that. The stable stuff can potentially be worked on a little bit. It's not going to go away. It's, it's who he is. He's, it is how he is. But hopefully, you know, we could find him an owner that he could trust in and build that with. Um, I'll say at this point, that that's not me. And I know a lot of people recently have told me that, well, why don't you just do that? And it, I, I can't do it, guys. I don't have trust in the horse. I can't, I can't do it. I'm not equipped. I knew that when I bought a horse. I knew that I was looking for a certain kind of horse and it was very important that it was that kind of horse because I knew what I could and couldn't deal with. It's the reasons that I've done everything I've done. It's the reasons that I chose, the livery I chose and everything else. And I know if you followed me from the beginning, I know you know that. But anyway, where was I? So yeah, the verdict essentially was he could, he, he's workable. He's, this is, certainly isn't a put to sleep situation, by the way, which I will get into that in a bit, but this is not a put to sleep thing. I've been suggested that so many times today already. That's not what's going on here. He's not so aggressive, he can't be handled and he needs put down. That's not what this is. A proper experienced person can handle this horse. I cannot. This, the person that needs to own this horse is a very experienced horseman, show jumper, or whatever you want to call them, just a very experienced rider that is not phased by aggressive behavior like this. That's what it is, okay? And I've never said anything to the contrary. I've never said it's the horse's fault. I've never said anything to the contrary. Anyway, so it was concluded that he could be worked with. Um, he could be sort of re rehabilitated, trained, all of that umbrella of things. And then an owner could maybe be found for him at a huge loss, which I'd, I'd spoke with it with my livery um, people the day before. And I, I knew that was coming. I, I've always known that was coming because at the end of the day, he's not worth what I bought him for. Um, so he could be passed on to a new owner at a, at a significant loss, but at least he could actually have a fulfilling life because he's now nearly 14 and only certain owners might be looking for this kind of horse, which I, I will actually tell you who he is and everything. Um, not everyone's going to want that. And if it's the time to pass him on to someone that can really appreciate him and, and, you know, and work with him and have a good time with him, it's, it's kind of now. Um, plus it's, it's not good for him to just be sat there while I figure my shit out. You know what I mean? It's not fair on him. So anyway, I asked how long this would take. And of course they said to me, well, I don't know how long is a piece of string. And that's fair. Um, I don't know how long it would take. So I'm kind of faced with this choice. 
Look, I'm going to level with you. I want to keep fighting. I'm kind of out of cash, pretty much. I believe my solicitor when she says that this one's going to take it to the end. And then some. I just... I just have to think of what's best for this pony at this point, and I don't know if I'm ready to just totally cut my losses and stop fighting yet. I don't know. <sighs> Sorry. <laughs> Sorry, the editing's probably just got real choppy. This is why. Just give me a minute. I don't know if I want to stop fighting yet. I don't know. I haven't made that choice. I do have a choice to keep fighting. I just don't know how long I can do this financially. This is taking way more than I thought. I thought I would get somewhere. I haven't. I feel really bad for the horse and I want him to end up with someone that is competent at taking care of him and someone that won't do this to him again because it was very obvious to the trainer that, you know, that he has been abused and I'm very worried about where to send him. Ironically, I've learned a fair bit about horse ownership without even practically riding a horse, but none of this is his fault and I don't, I don't want him in the wrong hands. And I don't know if the owner takes him back and wins the case, if that's the right place for him, because I don't know who's done this to him. This is how it's going to go. I am trying to work my ass off to pay the bill for this. I got quoted £250 a week for his training and rehabilitation on top of any litigation I'm currently going through, on top of any livery fees, on top of anything that I'm currently paying. That's an extra £1,000 a month. But to be frank with you, I don't have it. I don't have it. But I'm going to try and get it. I'm going to try and do more videos. So if you see me put out a lot of videos, please just know why, I guess. Um, you know, I don't actually have the time to put out more content. My house is nowhere near done quite yet. It might be sort of soon um, with a bit of luck, but I'm going to do my best to get out content for you guys to do more things um, that I enjoy and that you will enjoy. That is absolutely my plan. Please be patient while I get there. I have a house with nothing in it because I can't afford to put anything in it, <laughs> which is fine. That doesn't bother me. That's not, I don't care right now. I really don't, um, but I'm going to do my best to do that anyway. And I'm going to do my best to put this horse into training, rehabilitation, whatever you want to call it, and have professionals work with him and find him a new home. A very understanding one at that. The plan is, because he's so fat, <laughs> he is, um, the nicest thing I can do for him is to swim him. If anybody remembers, uh, you might not remember, but my livery specializes in rehabilitation of horses physically, not behaviorally. Good boy. Good boy. Come on. Good boy. They specialize in that, so I could swim him for a couple of weeks, and you would not believe the difference swimming a horse can make to their weight. So my plan is to, without riding him, without stressing him out at all, he will be swam for two weeks to build up his cardiovascular health, to lose some of the extra pounds, to get some muscle, so that when someone works with him, he has the energy for it, he feels strong. That's not a barrier for him to do what's being asked of him or anything like that. I'm going to do that first. That has a cost, but I think that's a well-spent cost. I think that's the best for him. From then on, say this process takes two weeks, I'm going to leave him in the hands of the trainers who are going to do this. And I don't know how long it's going to take. At a thousand pound a month, I don't know how long it's going to take. I don't. It could be, you know, a month. It could be two. It could be three. Um, and then I will try and move him on to another owner. I haven't decided if I want to keep on fighting after that. I don't know. I've gone through a lot in the past week and I feel like I'm bottoming out and I've only got so much in me and I can't lose everything that I've gained financially for this. I can't do it, guys. I can't do it. I know I say this a lot, and there's a reason why I've been saying it a lot recently, because I've been feeling it. A lot of people seem to have no sympathy for me because they think I'm some kind of millionaire. Once again, I'm not. I don't, I don't have tons of money. I'm very much working class. Um, this business behind me is a separate entity. It's not 
something I pool money from or anything like that. It's not how it works. I live off what, you know, what, what I do here for you guys on YouTube. But anyway, I'm going to do the best to do that. But I don't know how far I'm going to get. And I feel really embarrassed asking for help. But I did set up a GoFundMe. Um, Saturday, I think which I will really get into because I'm, I'm going through it today. Basically explaining this situation that I've just explained to you. Obviously a lot is left out. I, I kind of wrote it more for, not for you guys, but it was written in a certain way, thinking people knew more than they did. And I've had a lot of backlash from it this morning. So I accept that. Um, so by the time you see this GoFundMe, I will have rewritten bits of it. Basically, I'm starting a GoFundMe to help with this process because I, as I say, I'm, I'm bottoming out. Um, any anything anyone decides to donate which you absolutely don't have to by the way just send me a love heart or a like or whatever and i'll feel better but if anyone chooses to donate to it i've outlined in the gofundme how the money will be spent and basically the money i get is spent on the horse so first he will be given the swimming lessons it will help fund that then the trainers obviously um, after that, I, again, I don't know how long it's going to take. I'm hoping it's not more than three months. That would be not good. And anything extra anyone would like to donate after that, I'm pledging to spend that on litigation and to keep fighting this. I, I'm going to be honest. I did this GoFundMe on Saturday and I put a goal of £10,000 on it. Just to be totally honest with you. I tried to explain in that GoFundMe that I thought around 3,000 would be for the horse. I'm hoping it doesn't take too much more than that. You, I don't know, but I'm hoping it doesn't. I'm hoping three months might, might do it. Um, and that's no professional's opinion. That's my own guess because they can't tell me. So I'm hoping that that would be enough for that. And I guess that makes 7,000 for litigation. It doesn't cover it at all. Um, I've had a lot of angry comments today. It doesn't cover it even remotely. A barrister for the day is probably about 5,000, and that's just to appear in court. Court fees, maybe one to 2,000. Um, I could have that number wrong, but I think it's about 1,000. Um, it's, it's not really going to cover it because there's going to be more letters and more things. Um, but I'm not asking someone to pay me out of this. I'm just asking for a little bit of help. I don't want to leave the horse where he is. Although he's getting care, he's not getting any stimulation. It's just, it's not what I want for him. He shouldn't have to wait while this shit continues. Um, especially when his window of finding a fulfilling owner is, is closing on him with his age and, and everything else. Yeah, so that's one option. I don't want to, I don't want to sell him to a random person. I'm not skilled enough to pick out the right person myself and I understand that. Because again, I'm novice. Um, so, I want to send him somewhere that I know they will find the people to be his person or whatever. So in the description of this video, you'll find a GoFundMe link. Now you don't have to do anything with it. You can just share it if you want. You know what? That'd be a big help. If you don't want to donate or you don't agree with what I'm doing, that's totally fine. Um, share it would be really helpful. And hopefully everything is explained in the GoFundMe. Um, you will see there, finally, the horse. His name is... Bobby. He is a grey Connemara gelding. Um, he looks adorable on his photographs. <laughs> no, it's, they're not in the stable or anything, or he's not being ridden. Um, that is him. He was originally sold to me under a totally different name. His name was Oggy, and I don't know if I ever told you that I spent a long time tracking down who he actually was and tracking down previous owners. I can't remember what detail I went into, but that's his real name anyway. His real name is Bobby, and that's how I would like him to be known. So I'd like to return his original name to him. Although the livery staff call him Oggy, so that's kind of like awkward. But anyway, so uh, I've never revealed who the seller is. And honestly, I'm, I'm fucking going to do it at some point. So do not think I'm not going to do that. I just need to wait and see if I'm litigating or not litigating. So that is a factor here. But Ben posted the link to this GoFundMe that I made on Saturday into the... It was a dodgy dealer... UK horse group. Just to spread awareness, anything. I feel embarrassed enough as it is, guys. I feel embarrassed enough as it is. Um, 
But the response I got was really nothing I ever expected in my entire life to the point where it really made me realize how hardened I've become in this job by the fact that these comments didn't affect me too much because they were fucking brutal. I got called a disgrace to the horse world. You know, you got yourself into this mess, you fix it. Um, there, was, there was a lot of shitty comments. I'm, I'm not even joking. Someone was like, is she even legit? I got accused of basically scamming people for the money. And I was like, oh my God, wh why would I go into a group like this? Not that I even went in, Ben shared it. Um, you know, why would anyone put something in this in a scammers group trying to scam people? And why would it be for £10,000? Um, someone was like, are you even legit? I was like, look, I've been documenting this on my YouTube channel. I didn't mention anything about plans or anything. I just was like, listen, I'm legit. I didn't get involved straight away, but I did eventually because it was getting really bad and Ben was just getting just shit thrown at him. Um, someone was basically like, I can't see any mention of horses. Are you sure you're not just doing this to boost your plant shop? And I'm just like, oh my God, I'm just, I'm at my wits end and I don't know what to do. I don't know what the right thing to do is here. And I'm just asking for some help. The reception I got is, guy, I can't put it into words, guys, the reception I got. I actually, I don't think I've experienced anything that bad even in the plant community, not for a long time, not since 2020. This shit was brutal. Now I accept they may not have understood everything, but it was just, it was just awful and, and I, I don't know what to think about it, but I essentially anyway got bullied into bringing the total of the GoFundMe right down to 3,000. So I'm just telling you, it was a 10, now it's a three. Um, I've brought down the total of the GoFundMe to reflect just um, Bobby's training and his rehab and things like that. That's not making anything for me, that's literally just covering those fees. Um, and really 3,000 would cover it for three months, which is what I'm guessing it might be. Um, so I've brought down the total to reflect that. Um, I'm not saying I was forced to, but Jesus Christ, um, that's not something I ever want to experience ever again. So that's kind of fun. I don't really know what to say other than, guys, I, I've tried every option. I, I can't do this forever. I'm not made of money. And it's very easy for someone to sit there on the other side of the camera and just not, just not understand what I've really got going on because this whole thing just convinces people that I'm something that I'm not and I've never professed to be anything else. Um, I work as hard as I can and I, I, I work to afford what I can reasonably afford and at the minute I, I can't, I can't do it. Do you know? I, I can't. That is what the GoFundMe is for. I feel extremely embarrassed asking, but I just want the best for this horse guys. And that is genuinely the place it comes from. Um, the original total I tried to explain, look, it's this much is for this. I was kind of trying to put that total there to say to people, look, if you want me to litigate, then it would be reflected in the total. And I don't know if that was the right thing to do. I've never done this before, so please give me some kind of tolerance, I guess. I've never done this before in my entire life. I've never thought I would even have to. That's what I was trying to do, and maybe that was not right. And I realize I don't have to apologize for this at all, but I'm doing it anyway because I'm just, I'm speaking from the heart. But that's the situation anyway. I don't know if I want to keep on fighting. I, I, I want to keep on fighting. That's not the right answer. I want to keep on fighting. I just, I don't know if I can. I'd have to kill myself to do it. And I don't know if I can do that. I have other obligations that I didn't have six months ago and we all know what they are, you know? So I have to stop and reconsider a little bit. I have so much more outgoing now and it's to keep a roof over my head. I had eight months off for that where I was able to save extra cash and that extra cash has been spent on this. So I'm going to keep working as hard as I can, but I don't know, guys. There, There is another element to this and I don't know if anybody's going to see what I'm saying or not, but in a weird way, I feel like I'm letting people down by not continuing to fight because I wanted to show people that you can do something like this and win. Not, not assholes don't have to finish first. That's kind of what I thought I'd be able to show people. That's not the reason I've litigated, obviously not. It's kind of want to be fucked with. But I wanted to show people that you can be like that and you can get something out of it and you shouldn't just take what you're given. You shouldn't always just cut your losses. You should try. Do you know what I mean? So I felt really weird about just not litigating further. And trust me, up until this phone call with my solicitor on Wednesday, was it, just gone last week, I was still very much in the, you know, opinion of fighting. 
this phone call has thrown me for six because it's made me feel like she doesn't believe in me by what she's suggested. Because she's basically saying, look, this woman's going to just make this impossible for you. She didn't say I couldn't win it. She just said, hey, she's going to drag this out. So what she's basically telling me is there's a long road ahead of you to get out of this. It's not impossible to win. I think the facts are on my side for what it's worth. The show jumping thing is the show jumping thing. As you know, there's records there for that. All those things are in place. Obviously, I videoed the trainers working with the horse, but he didn't do too much at the time. So, because the problem is intermittent, uh, under saddle that is. I, could, I mean, I could get a video of the stable stuff tomorrow. But anyway, I, I had more faith in this until this phone call, and now I'm questioning everything. I have to stop and do what's best for the horse, which is all I was trying to do um, in the GoFundMe, uh, but it's had such a bad reception on Facebook. I feel like I'm, I'm just trying to explain to you guys what's happened, how I've got there, who's told me this, why I've come to these decisions and how I'm going forward. I'm still acting on the advice of professionals. My solicitor was there the whole time when these trainers were there. So I'm acting on the advice I've been given, really. I, I, I have literally, guys, I have no idea why people were that cruel to me in the group. I don't, it's not something I'm familiar with. Maybe, maybe they just misunderstood what I was trying to do. I don't really know. Um, I tried to explain, but it didn't work. So, um, if anyone's going to go looking for that, by the way, maybe by some chance you've seen it, but I've deleted it. Um, I didn't delete it. I got Ben to delete it because I just thought, oh my God, no, this is not, no. I'm genuinely just trying to do right by this horse. So I have a GoFundMe in the description that explains to the best of what I can explain to you uh, without breaking some litigation stuff. Because again, because I don't know if I'm going to continue, I need to just still protect some facts and details. Um, as soon as I'm not litigating, then either because I win or because I stop, then I'm probably quite happy to release some fucking details at this point um, and everything else. But I put that total in there. You don't have to help. Please do not, 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 not listen to what I'm saying and feel any pressure to help me out. Honestly, if you could just share it or something, uh, that would be great. Or if you can't share it, just leave a supportive comment and make me feel better or tell me I'm probably doing the right thing for the horse. That would mean the world to me. So please don't feel any pressure at all. These are shit times. Did shit for all of us. The U this situation in the UK with um, cost of living is just stupid right now and I do know that I'm part of that um, I've been dropped into it head first because I've got a brand new mortgage and everything so I know I know all these things I'm not I'm, I'm not wanting anybody to feel any obligation for anything I'm just I'm being transparent with you I'm telling you where I'm at I'm giving you the honest updates because you guys have had these updates the whole time I'm not going to stop giving them now um, I've reached that decision if by any chance I don't raise any money which is totally acceptable no one, I don't have a right to raise the money or anything. If I don't raise the money, I don't have the options that I thought I could have had. There might be some changes to what I've told you is going to happen. Obviously, guys, if I can't pay for it, it can't happen. I, I, just, don't, I just don't want to sell them without passing them on somewhere really good. So obviously, if I, if I can't scrape together the cash or, or anything, then I, I, I can't litigate anymore, I don't think. I think I've bottomed out. Um... I thought I had it in me, but obviously since I've got the house and things need done to it and the more you do, the more you find, right? Um, stuff like that. So I, I bombed out. I feel really embarrassed saying this. Trust me, this took a lot to do this. I know a lot of people have suggested that I do something like this in the past for, for different things, not, not necessarily for the horse. I can't remember what they suggested. They suggested something else in the past. Um, and I've always said no, because I'm not, I'm really not that kind of person. I will work myself out of a problem. My hands are tied at the minute because there's so much going on. I can't even do the work to get out of the problem. I'm, I'm really quite worried about it, to be honest. But I don't want to draw on any more. I've cut like three cuttings. I apologize. Um, but I hope that it was abundantly clear from the start of this video that that's not really what the video was. I just, I owe you an update. I owe you transparency in what I'm doing and what I'm up to. Because um, if I didn't and I just started a GoFundMe and then didn't tell anybody, I think it'd be a bit weird. So I'm being transparent, but yeah, that's Bobby the Connemara. He's, bless him, he's lovely. Um, I'm terrified of passing this pony off to someone that will use violence back on him if he gets aggressive with them. I'm not having that.
That's why he's in this position. It won't, people that own horses, I'm sure you know that doesn't get you anywhere anyway. Um, so I can't have that. If anybody has any other options, you're welcome to write them in. Um, it has been suggested uh, this morning, by the way, you know, grass livery, stick them out there. I don't think that's a good idea if I'm going to continue litigation because I'm not saying it is negligent, but it will be viewed as negligence from the other side. And if you think they won't use that to drag that out another six months somehow, they will, I'm telling you. My sister gave me the full warning on that. The only reason that passing them on and making a sale makes a difference is she has an official invitation to turn up and inspect that horse before sale to make sure that he is sound. I'm not secretly making a profit or anything, you know, anything like that for her case, she will have an official invitation to turn up. If she wavers that, that's on her. She can't come back from that. So that's how that differs, by the way. Someone suggested this morning I put him on DIY livery. I can't do that. I, I don't have the time to do that. This is why I picked full livery. I don't have the time to do that. Um, but, but that's it. Anyway, um, if you have any questions, I will do my best to answer them. I am quite busy. I'm going backwards and forwards with all this stuff at the minute. Yeah, I, I'm doing a lot. Um, shit. But I will try my best to answer any questions you've got. Uh, sorry if the editing got a bit choppy there. That's not, it wasn't intended anyway. I'm trying to just, um, tell you what's going on. So. That's what's going on. That's not an update I expected to give you, to be honest. I really didn't. I really didn't. This is just not what I expected to be saying to you. I've been really bowled over by this. I did not expect my solicitor to say that because it's just made me feel like she doesn't think I'm going to get anywhere and I'm totally leveling with you. Wouldn't it have been nice to know that a year ago, six months ago? But anyway, I'll leave you with that. I would absolutely adore it if you could share that link, um, whether it's just to read about Bobby or to help spread awareness or anything like that, that'd be great. I'm well aware that I've royally put myself on the radar of this seller by doing this, by the way, and it is something I've thought about because these people are not messing around. Read the GoFundMe, you'll find that out. Um, to the point where, to be honest, I got a couple of comments in the group today and I, I genuinely suspected that they knew the seller because they were being real, real a certain way and they were saying certain things. So I realize I've royally put myself on the map, but I'm just trying to do what's best for this horse. The horse needs to move on. He can't move on. He's stuck in, he's stuck in a time sink, really. I can't move on from it. I'm getting drained. I'm getting stressed. I'm, I can't remember the last time I looked reasonably healthy. Anyway, that's that. I'm going to do my absolute damnedest to keep on working to afford all these things. But as you might be able to imagine, it's getting real tough. And I certainly can't afford to do this litigate and everything else. I can't, I can't do it, guys. I hope if, the, if one thing comes from this video, honestly, let it be this. Seriously, let it be this. I hope I haven't disappointed anybody by my attitude towards what a lot of people might deem to be giving up. I, that's not something that I really preach. Um... But here I am. So I'm going to go because I'm not making a lot of sense. I suspect my heart rate is still at 100 beats per minute. It's been a really rough day. I'm going to go. Thank you so much for listening today. I will look at your comments. Please keep it constructive. Keep it kind. This is really not the time for jabs or anything. I'm going to delete things if they get nasty. If I catch anyone coming over from that dealer group, the scammer group, then I'm going to delete you too because, oh my God, I did not need the shit that I got today for trying to help horse. Um, thank you for your time today. I'm so sorry for anyone I've disappointed about not bringing out planned content or not bringing out joyous content. I, I totally take that. I really take that. But even this video alone helps me pay <laughs> for this training, this rehabilitation that I need to pay for. So honestly, just thank you. Just thank you for even still being here. So with that, I'm gonna love you and leave you. Thank you so much for hopefully your understanding. I welcome any comments as long as they're okay. I guess that's it for this week's video. I will see you next week and it, it will be something more normal. I can guarantee you that. Thank you very much for watching this video, guys. If you like this video, please leave a like. Not really appropriate. If you haven't already subscribed, that would be really nice too. If you've watched my content for a long time and you haven't already done so, then please subscribe. And until next time, I have tons of plant content on here. Um, that are happier than this, I suppose. Um, so if you'd like to watch that, then feel free. Until then, 
I will love you and leave you. Thank you so much. And I will see you next week. Bye, guys.